What would stop me living in the Philippines long term? Now, when I say long term, it's basically moving back there. It's not holiday. It's not um, prolonged stays for like six months, or whatever. It's actually moving there full time. Uh, the first thing I want to say is the exchange rates. Uh, when I went to the Philippines originally back in 2007, 2008, it was nearly 100 pesos to the pound. Now it's less than 70. Um, the cost of food has risen significantly and so has the general cost but also our quality of life has changed over that period of time. Um, I mean when I first moved there we could live on 5,000 pesos a month because uh, we lived in a little one bedroom place and we were quite happy there. With two kids we need a bit more space, we need air conditioning, we need to have transportation, we need a bit more bells and whistles. So our costs are significantly more. Um, during the hot months, if we were running all the aircon and everything, I've had bills as high as 20,000 pesos for the electric. So the cost of living is significantly more. And then about 7,000 to 10,000 pesos for fuel uh, for the fall before. Those costs, when you start taking all those things into account to keep the same standard of living we have here in Europe, um, it's cheaper in Europe. It, it really is. But also you've got to take, factor in things like health insurance. Um, I can transfer my social security and stuff from the UK, so it doesn't really cost me anything in Spain. But at the same time, if we go private, 128 euros a month for a family of four, um, and that's on a, what they call a co-payment. So if I go to the doctors, it would cost me four euros an appointment. Um, but normally if I wasn't insured, it would cost me 110. So it's, it's like a reduced rate. So those sort of things become pretty good. You know, um, although it's got the healthcare system for free here, Philippines. They may have a healthcare system for free, but it's not at the same level. Um, so you've got to weigh those things up. You've got to think about those things. Because long term, they're an issue for us because we've got two young kids. So it's not just a case of me making sure that the kids are taken care of, but also I'm taken care of and the wife's taken care of. Because as parents, you've got um, responsibilities. So those sort of things would say, going back to the Philippines long term, not really an option um, because it's so much better in Spain. Uh, I mean, weather-wise, we're on par. You know, you know we've had the storms the last week, but outside now, it's sunny. It's as if it hadn't even happened. And, it's, you know, I walk out in front of the sun, I don't need a coat on. It's nice and warm. And it's December. You know, it's two days before Christmas. That's one of the things we have here. The rents are cheap here. Now, we may be buying a property, or not, not committed to anything yet, because I'm still um, weighing up our options. But the, the, the point being is the work contracts I have seem to be ongoing now, which is nice. Um, so that's a bonus. And with the Philippines... I could still get the same work, but if the work had stopped, the flight back to the UK from the Philippines means I'd be in the UK for three months or whatever doing some contract work, where from Spain, I could be home at the weekends. My father had just come over. He just went back uh, last week. His flight was only £20. So those things are big reasons why the Philippines isn't such a viable option these days. When I was younger, it's all new, it's all fresh, it's all interesting. And then you start looking at things like the food as well, and you're going, a friend of ours just got back to the UK, um, and he paid five pounds for a steak, and says, in the Philippines, I'm not paying 20 pounds. And it's like, the Philippines are medium-sized potatoes, 40 pesos, where the UK, I think I paid nearly about 130, 140 um, for a five kilo bag of potatoes. 
Those little things, oh, oh, that's nothing. But the thing is, they add up because inflation is a problem in the Philippines. It has been for a long time. I know it's, our costs have steadily gone up um, since 2007, 2008. That's why I was talking about the 30% increase on income every year because of the inflation, because of the drop in exchange rates, because it's becoming more and more expensive to live there. Yes, I still have some of these problems in Europe, but at the same time, if I'm not worrying about medical care cover, um, the food quality is much better and cheaper, and a lot of stuff's covered by EU legislation, where in the UK, uh, sorry, in the Philippines, things like medical cover, are you 100% 100% sure you're covered? Because if you went in and had a accident and you go there, it's okay, well, we'll reimburse you once you get the um, invoices or you paid them. It's not 100%, is it? Because you have to pay it up front and then get the money back off the insurance company. What if it's something major? What if it's something you don't financially find you're capable of covering? How does that pan out? Now, I'm sure it would be covered at some point, or should be, but at the same time, it's still a lot of stress around something else happening at the same time. You know, somebody got run over by a bus or something. You've got all that frustration, and then you've got, got the stress of trying to make sure that, that it gets paid. Those things sort of get me thinking, should we, should we go back to the Philippines long term? I mean, and you're sort of thinking, well, no, I've experienced it, I've done it. Um, yes, it's good for business opportunities because the labor is still cheap. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of costs involved in risks that I don't really have in Spain. I don't really have anywhere else in Europe, to be honest. Um, it's just things that could influence whether you live in the Philippines permanently. Um, because I know a lot of people in the first couple of years went there, it's all great, it's all new, it's all fantastic, and then by the end of year two, or even within six months, are leaving, because it's become more expensive than they thought, uh, they've had medical issues, the, the relationships gone sour, they've had um, problems they hadn't foreseen, and a lot of it you can plan for, but at the same time, you can plan for the exchange rates. You mean you can put 30% in the bank um, to allow for some movement, but what if it stays the same? These are the things that, you know, moving to Europe, although we've got the frustrations of dealing with the paperwork, beyond that, it's nice. Because we don't have the, the other issues. In the Philippines, we still have some ongoing things, but that's part of life, you know, because, you know, as a family, we function as a family group. So, like when my father-in-law had an accident with a motorbike, I had no problem with covering the medical costs. It's the same with um, some of the other things that have happened medically. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff I've done for people over the years relating to medical stuff, because I know they haven't financially been able to do it. And I've sort of like, well, I don't mind doing it, you know, it's their friends, their family, whatever. But the, the thing is, in Spain, I don't have any of those problems. Those problems are all on the Philippines side. And I suppose that's one of the big things, it's the risks that come with it. And I said, when you're single, or you're young, or you're just going there on your own and just planning to live out your, la your last years and stuff, a lot of that stuff you don't even think of, or you're just like, what, if it happens, it happens. But the problem I have is the kids now, <laughs> you know, the, I mean, the, the responsibilities of others, which is the main consideration I have these days. Thanks for watching. Good question.